Hey, welcome back to another episode on The Corridor Crew. Today is a very special day because we are joined by none other than Brent. Hello there. Where are we? We are at Cerro Gordo, and back in the 1800s, this was the largest silver mine in California's history. And you live here full time now, right? This Every is a ghost day. town. Every day, oh because I'm here. My goal, above and beyond all else, is to like understand the history here and then preserve it for future generations. Rebuilding old cabins, stabilizing them, understanding old documents and this and that. But with you guys, we'll be able to do something totally different. So we are here today to scan it in 3D so that we can preserve it for you digitally forever. Brent here has his own really cool YouTube channel documenting what it's like to actually live here. You do a very great job of making people excited about this town. There's so many people who would love to visit this place, but the vast majority of people will never get that opportunity. So I'm hoping that by being able to scan this place, we will give your fans that opportunity whenever they want. I mean, that would be awesome. You know, this town has been around for 150 years. 150 years from now, I imagine they will hope that they had, you know, a good representation of what each building looked like. Yeah. And so if we can accomplish that, that's gonna be pretty cool. We are also joined by Chris Heinrich from Polycam. He is here to make sure we get some very good scans of this whole place. I'm super excited to be here with Brent and the Corridor crew to be scanning Cerro Gordo. There is almost no better place on earth than I can imagine to try to scan a place and reconstruct it digitally for the viewers of Brent's channel, for anybody else who would like to visit this place. And it wouldn't be a ghost town if we didn't have our resident ghost expert, this guy. Um. I, I consider myself a ghost enthusiast, a ghost lover, in that I have loved many ghosts. My hope and goal today is to get a lot of scans of all the exterior of the buildings, maybe even some interiors of the buildings, and then at the end of the day, if we got time, the inside of a mine. I think that's my favorite part of Cerro Gordo is the mines. There's 30 miles of mines underneath here. 30 miles? <laughs> Wait, I didn't realize it was 30 <laughs> miles. 30 miles. So like underneath is like a honeycomb right now. So you're standing on top of many, many miles of mines. The most common question I get when I, about my time up here is like what it's like to be in a mine. So if we can accomplish that, then I think a lot of people will be stoked. We still got to figure out how to do that. We still got to actually do the scans. And that's what we're doing today. So let's get to it. What is this building? We are in uh, the former general store here. You know, where all the miners would get their supplies. So imagine pickaxes, helmets, dry goods, canned goods. And these days, this is kind of the museum. So anything that I find here on site goes in here. Anytime I go into the mine and find something, it goes back there. What are some of the more special items in here? Like obviously I'm looking at dynamite boxes. Yeah, so the classic find in an abandoned mine is dynamite boxes because all of the mining was done here with dynamite. Fire in the hole. This is what they're mining at Cerro Gordo. This is Galena. You won't realize how heavy this is, but you know, if you want to feel it, it's... No! <laughs> Galena. And so Galena is a lot of lead and a little bit of silver, so don't lick it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, Ren, put it down. Put the lead down. And so back in the day, they mined close to, if you dress it for inflation, $500 million worth of this. This is how they would mine before they had big machinery here. This would be called single jacking. So what they would do is they'd go up to the rock, put it in, hit it, do a quarter turn, hit it, do a quarter turn. You would get this far in. You would take a stick of dynamite, put it in that hole, oh, cover gosh. it up blow it up. If you don't have the resources to have an automatic hoist, you put it in a bag like this, and you'd have to like put this over your shoulder and like hike the ore out of the mine to then refine it. You want to start with that hammer? Yes. I found this hammer in a mine, and you can see how hard this guy was working. It kind of like flattened where his hand was hitting it, but I would love to scan this, and I have no idea what I'm doing with the app, so. So do you want to just do like a super quick tutorial for these guys? They haven't done it before. I wish I knew some of the finer details or perhaps tips and tricks on how to get those sweet, sweet scans. What, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Following along at home, you could download Polycam if you've got an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, we're launching a way that you can upload your images to our website and process them there, so you can take images with any camera that you've got. The reason why I love Polycam so much is that for years we've been doing 3D scanning, photogrammetry, and it's been such like a complex thing to do, but Polycam has made it so easy that you can literally whip out your phone and do it and it just does the work for you. If you've got a newer iPhone, then you have LiDAR available to you. But what we're gonna use is photo mode, which works on all the iPhones. And it's also the best at scanning small objects. I think a good way for beginners to get started is to take some smallish object, you know, ideally something that's interesting, visually interesting, something important to you, and try to find you know, something like a, a white surface that we're gonna scan it against, scan it from all angles, and the algorithm's gonna stitch it together into one coherent 3D model. For best practices, you wanna have as much like ambient lighting as possible, because whatever lighting you get in your scan is baked in. That is now going to be part of the actual visual texture, so 
I think one way that works really well is just to be outside in the shade. What I'm really interested in is for Germany is like, if you look, there's some type of stamp in here. I think it says Nevada over here. And behind it, I think it's initials. So I'm wondering if the guy like stamped his initials into mm -hmm. it. And so if we can preserve even like the finer details like that, that would be sweet. Then yeah, you should be good to go. You can hit upload and process. You can check back, you know, 10 minutes or so. And so one piece of Cerro history preserved, a couple million to go, but we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it done. And the can scanned really well. Look at how good that can scan. Wow. Look at that can scan. Oh, wow. That's awesome. What's what the cool hell? can scan? Dude, dude, that is. You did the photo move? That's fantastic. Dude. Yeah. That's a can. As far as first scan goes? Hell yeah. Solid first scan. Yeah. Hey, aced my first scan. The great thing about scanning is that you can scan pretty much anything, right? And so we're going to scan individual artifacts here, but also scan the entirety of this room. The point of the LiDAR is to basically just scan the environment in 3D, but then Polycam takes that and actually projects the images that your phone is capturing onto that geometry. It's like real-time projection mapping. And what's nice about the LiDAR mode is it actually kind of gives you a real-time feedback of what is being scanned. Whereas the photo mode, even though it's really great and whatnot, you're kind of just guessing and you'll find out later whether or not it worked. It's so cool to see a real-time like 3D model of the environment as you're looking at it. It's, it's very satisfying. The thing about 3D scanning is it can be as detailed as you want. The more input data you capture, the better your scans are gonna be. It's one thing to 3D scan a room that's just a room, but it's another to 3D scan something where pretty much every single item in the room has just a stupid amount of detail. 3D scanning is a time intensive process, but fortunately Polycam does make it relatively quick. And I think we're gonna get fairly comparable quality. I'm looking at just like the raw geometry simplified scan of it, just so you have like a preview. But for this, since it's a space, I'm just gonna hit the space preset and hit process. It's gonna take about three minutes to process this directly on my phone. I don't have to upload the photos to a server to process. All right, Brent, you wanna see the first ready. scan? So this is just the LiDAR scan. This is just a super quick scan that I yeah. did. Oh wow, and this is within the app? Yeah, this is all still inside of Polycam. And this is just with the LiDAR scan, so if we wanted to get more detail, we right. can use photo mode. No, that, I mean, already that's amazing. But it's kind of cool just to like literally move around. around. Yeah. And seeing it in the very space you scanned it. Yes. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about super that. super surreal about like the scale. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> Whoa. Are you scanning the scan? I'm not scanning the scan, but I'm looking at the scan inside, inside of the of scanned the... room. <laughs> this is pretty crazy to see. You're like the size of the whole room. You're, now you're a legit giant. And it's like actually doing like a live rotoscoping of you. That's pretty crazy. Welcome to the general store. Yeah, so this is a good example of what you can do with an interior, but Chris actually did a scan of this entire town before the sun hit it, yeah. which means that everything is in shadow, which means everything is very ambiently and uniformly lit. So we can relight it in CG. Yes. We're trying to scan the town, we're trying to scan inside these buildings, but I think I have to get one scan of you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, we gotta preserve that. you. Dude. You are a part of the history of this town now. We gotta preserve you <laughs> as well. So we got the quick scan in here. You're gonna do a photo scan at a higher detail inside here while I get the drone up in the air and do just a scan of the entire town with the high noon sun. Sounds good. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to do a scan that is basically the entire valley here. And then I'm gonna follow that up with a lot of scans of individual buildings. So I'll try to get it at multiple different levels so I can view it from multiple different angles. Basically, wherever you're scanning from is where it's going to look best in the final 3D model. So if you're doing a lot of really high aerial photography, the scans will look great from up there, but maybe not so much from down here. So I think I'll probably try to fly this drone lower and just kind of be very cognizant of where it actually is. So the amount of images you need, you know, depends on the complexity of your object. And yeah. so, you know, it's a thing that you kind of get a sense for. And then we have a couple options here. We have detail reduced, medium, full. Right, so depending on your application, you can select different levels of detail. Since we're doing historical preservation here, we want to preserve it in as much detail as possible. So go ahead and select full. It's done. It's going. So we're up here at the main entrance of the Union Mine, and I'm gonna get the drone up in the air so I can scan the actual building here from the outside. I'm gonna have to be very careful not to hit the power lines and just try to get as much coverage as I can. And so while I'm doing that, the other guys will actually be inside. This is the actual shaft of the Union Mine. So this hole goes 900 feet straight down, 
and then every 150 or 200 feet there's levels. Mm. The way you go down is this cable slowly lowers this cage. This is where all of the ore came out of. So this cage saw a lot of action back in the day. It still works. The cable goes up and then over there to that spool. And the guy sitting in that spool is basically like has your life in his hands, you know? Need be, he's gonna pull on this to try to make it stop. And what he's looking at is that dial up there. That's how far down the cage is. So this is a retrofitted hoist. Obviously this hydraulic system wasn't from the 1800s and neither was the electricity. So that used to be powered by steam. That required that big, you know, boiler over there. I'm not gonna lie, there is, you can feel a breeze oh, you can feel the uh, coming out of this. So there is a, a spooky element to this where it's like, what if, you know? Two drones in the air right now. Oh. Yeah, we're just trying to capture as many scans as we can before we lose light. So Chris has his drone up in the air. I've got my drone up in the air. This has been a really awesome day. 3D scanning, one wheeling, flying drones. I think it's gonna turn out well. So this is by no means necessary for typical scanning, but if you want to get like really into it, this is a rig. This we built with the intention of going through the actual mines. We're going to go into a mine, an old silver mine, and hopefully make it so other people can go into a mine, albeit digitally. This is cobbled together from a whole bunch of random things. This is very much so a Frankenstein rig, but it's gonna be very bright. The cool thing to think about is you gotta think when this rig is engaged, this will be the brightest that mine has ever been. You know, back really? in the day, they didn't have crazy bright lights. They were using carbide or candles. And so we may see things that nobody else before has seen, mm -hmm. you know? Take it easy, so but dangerous. Um, we are going to, I don't even, I don't even know how <laughs> oh this Created. First I ever subterranean one wheel ride in like, the Cerro Gordo mines. I will take that. Who? Ooh. <laughs> Just leading the way on a one wheel? Let me show you my mine. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Dude, this is radical. Woo! Thank God I got a helmet. This is nuts, Brent. Yeah. This is so cool. Welcome. Oh, there's a little yes. room back here? Oh, that mannequin is terrifying. Holy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Thank you for not telling me about that. Because for a half a second, I was like, it's real. It's finally happening. <laughs> yep, if you don't lean too far back, because you look behind you. Oh, what the? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. How far down does that go? Uh, about 150 feet. Stop. Back in the day, this connected into the Union Mine all underground. So you would have been able to go from down there all the way to where we were before. What was that? Ooh. How likely is it that there's a bell witch around? A bell witch is a particular kind of witch. Something to do with the town bell and a witch that eats children. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that common record. Okay, so we gotta watch out. Is that one? Cold eyes. Dead eyes. Oh, you got some, some golf down here? Yeah, we got some golf. You know, we got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Anybody want to putt? You know? Hole in one right now. You know, the, oh, oh, oh. Oh. I think the ghost kind of blocked it. Yeah. So people have scanned caves. I don't know about yeah. mines. I mean, we may be in uncharted territory here. Unscanned but, territory? <laughs> but I mean, I think one of the cool things about scanning the mine is that if you come in here with a flashlight or a carbide light or whatnot, right. you kind of only see one spot at a time, the thing that's illuminated. Right. But with this lighting rig, we're going to be able to light up the entire thing. Yeah. So you're going to be able to see it all lit up in a way that you just couldn't see it otherwise. Would you recommend LiDAR for this? Yeah. What's kind of cool about the LiDAR mode is it actually uses the accelerometer. So that is another way for it, besides just recognizing the visual patterns, to sure. kind of keep track of how far you've gone. I'm just going to start by scanning at the end through here and then just kind of just work our way back until we get to the entrance of this whole mine. This is going to be a very slow going thing. I'm kind of trying to just corkscrew because all these rocks have like back faces, front faces. I want to be able to just get all of that. You got a bat scan back here. Bat scan? Oh yeah, there he is. Cute. Oh. Ooh. I am glad so you glad that. I'm wearing a helmet. Dude, I feel more head trauma danger in this mine than I do one wheeling. I'll tell you what though, I think putting this many lights on it was a good idea. Everything is looking crispy. How you feeling? <sighs> Miners must have very strong thighs, man. Smaller people. Oh, yeah, they were smaller back then. They, they, were, they were minor. Yeah, very minor. Boom. You're almost there, man. The end is in sight. You got this. I've got, a, I've got a battery on me. It's okay. I'm almost done. You got this. You're so close. He's at the end. I think we are just now finishing. Hold the game. And we're done.
You did it. Sure. Save it before the phone dies. Oh my god, my phone is at 3% battery. Some ba oh my, I got so many rocks in my hair and down my shirt. Story of my life. Not the hair business, but the rocks everywhere. Every yeah, I know. Yeah. That was amazing. Whoa, this one came out great. So we got the data. Oh, you explored further than I did down that hole. I stopped at the hole, but you went yeah. around and kept going. Yeah. I know what you mean, because I was like, that's a scary hole. I'm not going further. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You see all the timbering in there, too. That's cool. Yeah. Dude! Yeah. It's like Whoa. a little dingus. Yeah. This rig worked out really well. There's so much light that everything was at a high enough exposure that as I'm moving around, there was no motion blur. Oh, neat. And so, like, all the textures oh, are really yeah. crisp. And it was bright enough that, like, when I wasn't close enough to the walls, it was still exposing it well enough. As a super janky last minute build, I think it works really well. Good. Um, who wants some chicken milanesa? I do. Also, a beer. So, after a couple days of scanning, we had everything we needed. Brent, thank you so much for yeah. having us, man. Thank you, guys. I'm super excited. I have a new hobby. Uh, or addiction, depending on it, of scanning things. So thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you guys. I'm excited to see the results. I'm gonna keep doing it. And uh, you know what they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So I'll just <laughs> one artifact at a time, Cerro Gordo will be preserved. I there think. you go, yeah. I'll make it happen. The next plan of action for this video is to get those scans ready to okay. go. Get them in a state that we can share them with the world. Yeah. But first things first, we gotta get off this mountain. So of course, we one wheeled down the whole thing. It was a ways too. It took us like an hour to get down and fortunately, none of us got hurt. Especially Nick, not hurt at all. I, I hit one rock, recovered, and then before I could rebalance, I hit another rock on the <laughs> other side. And uh, yeah, ate shit, but I rolled out of it and no injuries. So. so we're basically just kind of going through and cataloging all of the scans we got, the same way you would catalog artifacts in a museum. Chris and his team are actually going through and creating a landing page for all of these assets and whatnot. I liked this scan in particular because it's just like, it's got a lot of crazy detail. I mean, look at the backside of this tree. This is nuts. I have never experienced this level of quality from a photo scan so easily attainable. But why I'm really excited is all of the drone scans that we got. But I thought this is an iPhone app. Well, you were right. It's also now other things because Polycam is launching a feature today where you can actually upload any photos you want to their website. I'll show you how easy it is to get a 3D scan. As long as you've like taken pictures from pretty much every angle, you go up to create new, like that, hit the little photo icon in the top corner, and then you just uh, select all your photos that you want. Like anywhere between like one and 200 images for an object is usually pretty good. Hit open, it loads them all up right here. See, I selected 120. I usually do the full detail and I'll turn on object masking. Yeah, and then you just hit upload and process. You wait for it to upload. It takes a little bit of time because you gotta wait to upload your photos, wait for it to process and then re-download but it's so effortless that it doesn't feel like it takes time. One of the things I really wanted to do was to take these scans and combine them into one central scan of the whole town. The reason why being able to use any camera images is exciting because it opens up more than just using actual physical cameras. Earth Studio is awesome. I've used it before for a lot of the scale videos that I've made. And just by simply rendering out an orbiting camera around the Cerro Gordo mountain range itself, I was able to take those images from that sequence, upload it into the scan here, and look at that, dude, the entire mountain range. So the reason why that's cool is that now I have the scan of the whole mountain. It's got all the geometry and color. I can now scale that up and fit it into place like Lego blocks with the smaller, more high detailed scan of the whole town and then combine that with the even smaller and even more detailed scans of the individual buildings. And that's exactly what I've done here. So it took some effort to kind of like line things up with the scale, position, and orientation. But once you did, it like it works pretty well. <laughs> Each color here represents an individual separate scan that I've combined together. And while I was doing this, I realized, oh no, we didn't get a scan of the hillside between the town and the mine up here. We were just gonna have an Earth Studio render, which is not supposed to be good enough at this scale. That's why we're supposed to replace it, but we didn't have the hill. We only had part of the hill here. And then I remembered I was flying FPV while standing up on that hillside there, so I should have gotten enough frames in the video footage. I grabbed the video, I sped it up like 500%, so I didn't have to use as many frames, rendered out around 200 of them, threw it into Polycam, and then suddenly I had an incredible scan of this whole hill. This is, this is really cool. Chris is gonna be in any minute now, so it's time for us to show Brent what we've made. Hello. 
Yo, what up, dude? Hey, man. Hey, much. hey guys. <laughs> dude, good to see you, man. How's it going? It's going pretty good. So we've been hard at work getting all of the scans that we got out there at Cerro Gordo prepared and put together. And Chris and his team have actually prepared a really cool landing page on their website that'll act as like a really cool depository for all of the scans that already exist and may eventually exist. All right, I'm excited. All right, let's you know, do it. Cool. This page is, going to, is something that's going to be kind of up on the internet forever now. It's like part of the living record of, of Cerro Gordo. For fans of Cerro Gordo everywhere to be able to kind of explore and enjoy and help, help to continue preserve. I mean, my hope is that this is something that's kind of continues to grow over time and becomes a better and better record for posterity. If anyone can visit this page right now, and as we scroll down, we'll start seeing some of these scans. Yeah, you, oh, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you need mine. All you have to do is just click one of these, and it'll open it up in a 3D viewer inside of your browser. And just like that, we have the whole scan, and it's pretty high quality. Like, we can get in here and... Dang, that is awesome. I took my time to fly my drone as closely and slowly around this entire place. So this is just one of the many scans that we got. So cool. This is exciting for me. Like, my main goal always is to, you know, preserve the history here, and this is, like, doing it in a way that I never even thought was possible. Not only is this possible, it's getting easier by the day. This scan came out pretty dang good. Like, each of these separate scans are, are viewable separately as their own thing, but I actually went through and combined all of them into oh. one giant scan here. Oh, yeah. So, this isn't something that's on the website currently because it's a little too complex. Yeah. We're gonna have to optimize it if we want this to be uh, viewable, but it'll be great for like renders and stuff. But as you can see here, it's the whole town and high quality scans of each of these places here. I mean, the fact that the scan was able to get like the individual trusses of this whole thing working, and of course we got the Union Mine up here and the whole hillside here. So this is that's, huge. That's crazy. <laughs> So there's one more thing that we got put together here. We also scanned a mine. And you might remember, I had to do it in several different sections. We we're able to combine those sections together after the fact, and that is this. So this is the whole scan there. And if we get really close up. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, back at the mini golf course. So we've got the whole thing put together, and what's great yeah. about the 3D scanning is that it's able to kind of keep track of the scale of things. So we now know exactly how long this tunnel goes. This is where like miners would have gone to work. Pretty much every day, this was the safeguard tunnel. So back in the day, this connected to the Union Mine, which is the largest mine here. I don't know that any miner or anybody has been able to visualize a mine in this way, you know? How long is it? It back. is about 570 feet long. Okay, okay. Um, There's 30 miles of mine underneath the town. So obviously a, a stretch ambitious goal would be to slowly over many, many years take my poly cam down there and try to capture it all. Just even like a generational thing, they don't even mine like this anymore. So, you know, like even beyond that, the experience of walking through abandoned hard rock mines is something that won't last forever. And so it's very cool to be able to preserve it in this way. Yeah. We learned a lot from this whole process because I had never scanned a tunnel before, let alone a silver mine. We were able to get this exported out and load it onto my phone and load it up in AR. So you can like load this out in front of your house and uh, walk through the mine. But we also got, you know, some of the actual artifacts. You know, this one was cool because you could really see the decaying, chunky debris of the wood itself. Like, oh, wow. the yeah. fact that I was able to get the quality of that. You know, and now, now that it's digital, like, this is preserved forever. So you remember scanning that hammer? Yep. Here it is. And there it is. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, it's so cool. Just, I mean, you can see the groove where the guy was using it so often on the handle. Oh, that's right. Yeah, here. See where he's, just, like, swinging that over and over and over. Oh, that's right. His initials. And there they are. Yeah, that's something that I just can't relay in a video, you know? But this is now something that all your viewers can literally open up on their own computer now. Like they can, they can kind of look at this. And also what's cool is that like in the future, if you ever find any new artifacts, you can actually continue to scan them and yeah. put them on this page. You know, like a kind of a 3D museum of these things that they could pull out of the mines. It's cool that all of your viewers will be able to visit this web page, see all these different scans, but it's another story to kind of interact with the scans in a more visceral, tangible way, maybe with their friends, maybe with you. So, I want you to go to this webpage real quick. Go down to the Union Mine here. Just below the actual link for the scan, you see yep. Hubs by Mozilla. Click that link, and I'm gonna click it on mine as well. Oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> so basically what Chris and his team has done is they've assembled these scans into a multiplayer experience that anyone can visit in their web browser. Wow, you can look around. You can use the WASD to kind of steer yourself around. Up to 50 people can join this room at the same time. We got hubs set up for at least like five or six of the, the spaces on the website. So yeah. for like the museum, wow. for the assay building, for the whole town, for one of the whole town scans. Here, I think I can, uh, I can do something real quick. I'm gonna set up a camera. I'm gonna get a little uh, selfie with you here. Check this out. Here, stand right next to me over here. <laughs> There we go. So now we can look up at this camera here. <laughs> Three, two, one, smile. <laughs> I just took no, a photo. Um, Save that. <laughs> yeah. This is cool. I'm, this is this is yeah. really cool. Like I'm, I'm just very, very happy that this worked out. Like we talked about doing this, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's here working is nuts. I really feel like this is just the start. I'm very excited about where this could go and all the scans that you'll be able to continue getting. I had no idea this is what it would become, and so this is super cool. We're gonna have a link to all of this in the description of our videos, so all of your viewers, yeah, if they're cool. interested, they can check this out. No, it worked out amazingly, and to see it being used in the type of historic preservation is just something that I didn't know about, you know, and I'm excited to continue scanning and preserving and see where this thing can go. Building the Digital Museum of Cerro Gordo. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> cool, man. Well, hey, it was great seeing you again. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hang out again soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, guys. <sighs> Thank you so much to Brent for hosting us up at Cerro Gordo. He's got a whole YouTube channel. He lives in this place full time and he posts videos every week. Link in the description for him. Also, Polycam is amazing. I've literally been obsessed scanning everything. I've been doing a scan a day, I swear. Oh my God, you can check them out. Links in the description. It's an iPhone app, but also you can sign up for their web services now and you can upload from any camera. It's pretty great. I highly recommend it. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week in a React video and whatever we got coming out next week. It's something, right? <laughs> see you then. Thanks.